Check out these two versions of the same edit. It's pretty subtle, but version B feels like it's a bit more real somehow. All these shots were filmed on a static tripod. But in version B, we've added some fake handheld camera shake. To do this in DaVinci Resolve, select the clip you want to add shake for and come up to the effects. Click on Open Effects, click on the search bar here and type shake. Now drag this camera shake effect down onto the clip and close the effects. If your inspector isn't currently open, come over to the right here and click on it and then come over to the effects tab. If you want to see more properties, click on this little drop down at the top right to expand the inspector. The default settings for the camera shake effect look pretty terrible. If I just go full screen and play this back, it looks pretty unrealistic and a bit overdone. The top two parameters here, motion scale and speed scale, give us the broadest control over the final look. Motion scale determines how much the image moves around, so it's going to move around a lot more. And speed scale, if we max this out, affects how quickly the motion happens. Hopefully that isn't making you seasick. So let's just reduce these down a bit to give us a more subtle effect. The third slider here, Motion Blur, allows you to make the movement of the camera feel a bit more realistic. So let's max this out. And this can seem quite subtle, and it's also potentially going to slow down your computer. All of these controls under the Shake Level section allow you to fine tune how much you want the shake to move horizontally, vertically, around a rotation axis, and also digitally zooming in and out. All of these things can be used together to simulate a handheld camera shake look. For example, if you want more left to right movement, let's max out this pan amplitude. Now we should see a lot more movement left to right, which we can there. This tilt amplitude slider lets you choose how much you want the image to move up and down. If we max this out and play it back, we should see the image moving quite far up and down. The rotation amplitude chooses how much the image will rotate around. So this is what it looks like maxed out. You can see we have kind of rocking motion of a boat. Don't worry about this PTR speed for now. The zoom amplitude lets you choose how much the image is going to move in and out. And you can use this in conjunction with the zoom speed. I'll just max out both of these and this is what it looks like. You're probably never going to want to have those two things maxed out unless you want to create a kind of pumping dance floor effect. And this zoom type lets you choose whether you're only going to zoom out, in or both in and out. Depending on which option you select here and how big this zoom amplitude is, you're going to want to make sure that you don't end up with any black bars around the edge of the image when the image zooms in. The next section is this shake quality section. Some of these parameters allow you to affect the randomness of the shake. So for example, we can max out the randomness scale and randomness speed. And if we want to pause between each change, we can max that out and also pause interval and also pause randomness. So at the minute, all of these settings are looking pretty horrendous if we want to recreate a subtle handheld camera look. Let's just go and reset everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow a little bit of zooming in and out to simulate the hand moving forward and backwards when it's handheld. We're going to have a little bit of rotation, a little bit of tilt turn on motion blur, we'll increase the randomness scale, we'll increase the pause randomness, and we'll take a look at this first pass. So you can see that's moving about far too much. Not only is it moving too much, it's also moving around too fast. So we can come back to our first two sliders here, and we can reduce the speed scale and also the motion scale. Let's try them both set to about 0.26. Now you can see we've got a much more subtle effect. It's still probably moving around a little bit too much. We also maybe don't have quite enough of that rotation. We'll increase the rotation and we'll bring down the speed scale a little bit. And now you can see we've got a much subtler camera shake effect. If you look very closely, I think that we still have a bit too much movement, so we'll drop this motion scale down even more. Of course, you can max these things out if you want to go for a really extreme effect, but here we're trying to simulate a quite a subtle handheld effect, as if somebody was holding a camera filming me here in Switzerland. So that's a lot more subtle. Just play it back. Now we've got the cache. So what I'm going to do is right click on this clip and choose copy, right click on the second clip which currently doesn't have any camera shake and choose paste attributes, come down, click plugins and click apply and now we've got the same camera shake settings for this second clip. Just so you can see the difference what we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed scale so we get a slightly more shaky look. It still looks a little bit unrealistic as I feel like the zooming is not really helping us very much in this shot so I'm going to set these to zero so we now won't have any zooming 
in and out. And I also don't particularly like how much rotation we've got there. I'm going to reduce the pan amplitude a bit and increase the tilt amplitude. I'm going to reduce the pause length and increase the randomness speed. And let's take a look at this now. It's a lot shakier now but it's moving too quickly. We'll drop down the speed scale once again. So I hope you can see there's no exact perfect settings for every shot. You wanna match these settings with the footage that you're working with. So that's a lot better but you can spend a lot more time on these settings to get the exact look you want. As you can see here, it's also possible to fake a zoom in DaVinci Resolve. That's what you'll learn in this next video. I'm Jason Roberts, and I hope to see you in the next one.